This video lesson covers part one of a two-part lesson series that discusses Bernoulli's principle and Darcy's law. Support for the development of this lesson has been provided by the National Science Foundation through the Ohio University Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom program. This video lecture includes an introduction to Bernoulli's equation and uses of Bernoulli's equation. The second video lecture covers Darcy's law and rain gardens as an application of Darcy's law. Watch this video and then try to explain what you just saw. How does it work? Think about what supports the ping pong ball when the hairdryer is vertical. What supports the ping pong ball when the hairdryer is at an angle? How can the ball move left and right with the hairdryer? You might have answered that the air is holding the ping pong ball up, but how? Think about air and its properties while you try to come up with an answer. Did you know that air is a fluid? It might sound strange, since we're so used to thinking of water when we think of a fluid, but air is a fluid too. Knowing that air and water are both examples of fluids, how would you define a fluid? A fluid is a substance that will deform or flow when a shear force is applied to it. Fluids always take the shape of the container that it's placed in. There are four types of fluids. Water is an example of one type, and air is an example of another type. What kind of fluid is water? Water is a liquid, and liquids are incompressible. What kind of fluid is air? Air is a gas, and gases are compressible. What do you think the other two types of fluids are? Viscoelastics and plastics, and plasma are also fluids. Viscoelastic plastic fluids are like toothpaste and gelatin. The behavior of fluids is governed by certain principles. The reasoning behind the air holding the ping pong ball in the video is the same concept that allows airplanes and rockets to fly. It's caused by a manipulation of the air pressure around the object. This idea is explained by Bernoulli's principle and equation. Bernoulli's equation is given by the following relationship. P1 over rho plus V1 squared over 2 plus GH1 equals P2 over rho plus V2 squared over 2 plus GH2, where the left side of the equation describes the conditions at point 1 and the right side describes the conditions at point 2. P is the pressure, which is force per area and has units of pascals, or PSI, pounds per square inch. Rho is the fluid density, which is mass per volume and has units of kilograms per cubic meter, or pounds mass per cubic foot. V is the fluid velocity, with units of meters per second, or feet per second. G is the acceleration due to gravity, which we know is 9.81 meters per second squared, or 32.2 feet per second squared. Finally, h is the elevation of the points in question, with units of meters or feet. Bernoulli's equation tells us that the combination of pressure, velocity, and elevation conditions at point 1 and 2 must be the same. What conservation law does this equation follow? This equation states that energy is conserved because the energy at any two points must be equal. If we multiply through this equation by density, we can write Bernoulli's equation in terms of energy. The pressure term gives pressure energy, the velocity term gives kinetic energy, and the elevation term gives potential energy. Any change in one of the energy terms between point one and point two must be compensated by changes in the other energy terms. For example, at point one, we have a large area, a velocity V1 and a pressure P1, if the area reduces at point 2, the velocity must increase. Since we have an increased velocity at point 2 and the elevations are the same, the pressure at point 2 must be less than P1 in order for Bernoulli's equation to hold true. Bernoulli's equation can also be written in another form by dividing through both sides by g. This form gives us P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2g plus H1 equals P2 over gamma plus V2 squared over 2G plus H2, where gamma, the unit weight, 
is used to replace the term rho times g. In this form of Bernoulli's equation, each term has units of meters or feet and is referred to as a head value. We have pressure head, velocity head, and elevation head. This form of the equation is most often used in hydraulic applications, like pipes and open channel flow. In order to be able to use this equation, we must have values for pressure, velocity, and elevation. Fluid pressure can be calculated at any elevation within a water column using the hydrostatic pressure formula, P equals rho times G times H. According to this relationship, the hydrostatic pressure for a given fluid at any points with the same elevation should be the same because density and acceleration due to gravity are constant. Let's apply the hydrostatic pressure equation to solve for the pressure at two points in a water column. We want to know the pressure at depths of 2 meters and 4 meters for a column of water and a column of salt water. We know the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and the density of salt water is 1,022 kilograms per cubic meter. We'll start by calculating the pressure at a depth of 2 meters in the water column. We know P equals rho g h, so we can plug in our values and we get the pressure to be 19,620 pascals. If we do the same for the 4 meter depth in the water, we get a pressure of 39,240 pascals. Take a few moments to try calculating the pressures at the 2 meter and 4 meter depths for the salt water. What differences, if any, do you notice between the water and salt water results? What do you think might be the source of any differences? The salt water has a slightly higher density than regular water, so given the same elevations and a constant g, we get slightly higher pressure values for the salt water. We can also measure the pressure exerted by a fluid using a manometer and applying Bernoulli's equation. The manometer shown in the diagram on the right is holding two different fluids, and the fluids meet at point two. The unit weight of the dark fluid, which is oil, is 8,339 newtons per cubic meter. The elevations of points 1 and 2 are taken relative to a datum, which is set at the base of the manometer. We can start by writing Bernoulli's equation and identifying what we know and what we're trying to find. At point 2, we're trying to find the pressure. We know the velocity is zero because the fluid isn't moving and the elevation is 8 centimeters. We can also measure the pressure exerted by a fluid using a manometer and applying Bernoulli's equation. The manometer shown in the diagram on the right is holding two different fluids, and the fluids meet at point two. The unit weight of the dark fluid, which is oil, is 8,339 newtons per cubic meter. The elevations of points one and two are taken relative to a datum, which is set at the base of the manometer. We can start by writing Bernoulli's equation and identifying what we know and what we're trying to find. At point two, we're trying to find the pressure. We know the velocity is zero because the fluid isn't moving, and we know the elevation is eight centimeters. At point one, the pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure because the tube end is open to the air. Atmospheric pressure is 101,325 pascals. The velocity at point one is also zero, and the elevation is 25 centimeters. Knowing these values, we can rewrite Bernoulli's equation with the known values. The velocity head terms go away since velocity is zero, leaving us with P atmosphere over gamma plus H1 equals P2 over gamma plus H2. We can rearrange this equation to solve for P2 and then substitute our known values to do the final calculation. We find that the pressure at point two is 102,743 pascals or 103 kilopascals. Velocity head can be measured using a pitot tube, which converts kinetic energy into potential energy. The arrangement shown in the middle measures the total head, while the arrangements on the right and left measure dynamic and static heads. Elevation head is the simplest of the three to determine. Once a datum is set, the elevation head is the distance from the datum to the point of interest. In actual projects, the datum is usually taken as sea level or a known benchmark elevation. The concepts described by Bernoulli's equation are applied in several engineering applications, 
from water resources to mechanical and aeronautical designs. Bernoulli's equation is used when analyzing and designing open channel flow, closed pipe flow, groundwater flow, hydraulic lifts, cars, and airfoils, among many other applications, including dams and other man-made structures. Let's do a quick review of the ideas we just covered. Try to answer these three questions before we discuss the answers. Bernoulli's equation is based on conservation of energy. Remember the sum of the pressure energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy does not change from one point to another. Bernoulli's equation consists of three head measurements. Pressure head, P over gamma, velocity head, V squared over 2G, and elevation head, H. Bernoulli's equation is applicable for a wide variety of engineering and physics problems, including cars, dams, and airplanes. Now we'll take a break from lecture notes and do some activities to better understand Bernoulli's principle. Gather the following items to complete six activities that are described on the next slide. Complete these six activities and try to use the concepts we just covered to explain what happens. After you've completed the activities described on the previous slide, continue to the next video lesson in this series, Bernoulli's Principle and Darcy's Law, Part 2.